Eureka! In this video, let's have a look at how to investigate for paraproteinemia. The first question that our tests seek to answer is, is there an abnormal production of paraproteins? Is there a gamma globulinopathy? In order to answer this, you would do a serum protein electrophoresis. Serum protein electrophoresis involves the use of a gel medium with wells on them and two electrodes through which electricity runs, one positive terminal and one negative, and these are placed on either end of the gel medium. A solution containing proteins is placed into the wells. In this case, that solution is plasma. A control solution is placed in another well. Essentially, your subject's plasma is run against a control plasma. Proteins are negatively charged. They move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Different proteins move at different speeds through the gel medium. Staining the protein with a colored dye leaves marks along the gel medium as different protein molecules in the solution separate out. Any abnormal band of protein not present in the control plasma would be a paraprotein. Hence, serum protein electrophoresis answers the question of, is there a paraprotein? Is there a gamma globulinopathy? In our previous video, we talked about how the proteins in the body are like a harmonious ecosystem. The different proteins in the body are like the shrubs in the trees of the forest. Each tree has different branches. For the sake of discussion, in our paraprotein forest, there are five main types of plants. They are albumin, the alpha-1 tree, the alpha-2 tree, the beta tree, and the gamma tree. The alpha-1 tree has many different branches, such as the alpha fetoprotein branch, the HDL branch, the alpha-1 antitrypsin branch, and the thyroglobulin branch. The alpha-2 tree has branches, such as the antithrombin-3, heptoglobin, and seroloplasmin branches. The beta tree has branches such as transferrin, lipoprotein, and immunoglobulin branches and the gamma tree comprises IgG, IgM, and IgA branches. If you were to separate the trees in this paraprotein forest through a special sieve, this special sieve being serum electrophoresis, and plotted on a graph, you'd get a chart that looks something like this. The first tall spike is albumin. The second hump is the alpha-1 region and its associated proteins. The third hump is the alpha-2 region and its associated proteins. The next hump is the beta region with its proteins, and the last hump is the gamma region with its proteins. Now let's have a look at what happens if there is a sudden proliferation of one particular type of tree in the forest, the gamma tree. The gamma region is like a smooth hill because immunoglobulins are a mix of different immunoglobulins, IgG, A and M under normal circumstances, and the speed at which they run through the gel medium is slightly different. Hence, you get a smooth and spread out curve. If they were all of the same type, say IgG, and there was an abnormally large amount of just one type of immunoglobulin, they would form a narrow steep spike on the graph, a spike also known as the M spike. If all three types were increased in number, that is if there was a polyclonal increase in the immunoglobulins, the graph would be that denoted by the red dotted line. That brings us to our next question. Is the gamma globulinopathy monoclonal? In order to quantify the amount of each abnormal immunoglobulin family produced, we would do a test called immunofixation. To understand the principles of immunofixation, let's imagine a crocodile infested lake. Each hungry crocodile in this treacherous lake is a picky eater. He only wants to eat his favorite food. One is after the light chains, one is after IgM, and one is after IgG. In immunofixation, a test solution containing specific antibodies against each specific type of immunoglobulin is introduced. These antibodies are like a hungry crocodile. They'll form a complex with the specific immunoglobulin thereafter. This gives a measure of how much of each immunoglobulin is present. Immunofixation would tell you two things. First, what is the quantity of the heavy chain, IgM, A, or G? And second, what is the quantity of the light chain component in the form of either cut for or lambda light chains? 
Hence, electrophoresis tells you that there are paraproteins, and immunofixation tells you which type and how much of paraproteins there are in your body. Thank you for watching! Check out Eureka for more videos such as these, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe!